Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Sticky Note Marketing. I am thrilled to be able to introduce you to our next expert guest in our series here. Nikki Peters is with us today. Hey, Nikki, welcome. Hi, hello. I am so excited because Nikki has some great advice, thoughts, and inspiration for you when it comes to the topics of consistency as well as mindset, which I know are common themes, common questions that are coming up in our community today. So I think today's conversation is going to be especially relevant to some of the questions that have been coming through to me through DMs and emails. So I'm excited to bring this to you. If you have not met Nikki before, she is a wife, she is a mom, she is a business coach, she is a beauty influencer, she's a busy lady. <laughs> so I actually uh, am a customer of Nikki's and I was blown away by her customer service level, her professionalism, and her marketing savvy, being a marketer geek. So I'm super excited to, to introduce you to her today. Nikki, would you provide just a quick background, you know, what your business is all about, how you got into it, and anything else you want to share with the audience today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you guys, for those of you that don't know what Moni is, we are a naturally based anti-aging hair care, skin care, and wellness brand. Um, I've been with the company for about three and a half years, and I started with zero desire to sell. <laughs> um, when I first started three and a half years ago, I was busy. Um, I, you know, I'm a mom, I'm a wife. I worked for other jobs. I just started for the bigger discount. Um, I kind of stumbled into the business side of it. I'm a serial entrepreneur myself. I owned my own business as a postpartum doula. I ran a mom's group at a local hospital. I drove for Lyft and I worked a pretty busy job in reproductive medicine, which I absolutely loved. Um, and things kind of turned for me with the pandemic as it did with most other people two years ago. Um, once I kind of started stumbling into the money side of Mon8, people were noticing that my hair was changing and they were asking me what I was using. And all of a sudden I started making money with it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> if I can make money with this product and I'm not even really trying, I wonder what would happen if I actually put a little bit of effort into it. So that's what I did. I dropped driving for Lyft. I kind of got burnt out on doing the mom's group and being a postpartum doula, exchanging time for money. I did not get paid unless I worked with a family. So I was working 40 hour plus work weeks and do then doing overnights with newborn babies. So I was absolutely exhausted. Um, I ran Mon8 part-time with my reproductive medicine business job. And then two years ago, I got laid off and it, you know I was absolutely devastated. I thought I would work in reproductive productive medicine until, you know, I was kicked out of the field. <laughs> so that was kind of how I got started with all of this. It, it all kind of happened by accident and, and now I am doing it full time. So I'm really excited. Well, I mean, and those are not super laid back, you know, no stress opportunities. I mean, those are, those are pretty intense careers, right? When you're dealing with newborn babies and staying overnight, I mean, those had to be some pretty stressful situations. Yes. I specialized in, since I worked for reproductive medicine, I specialized in working with families that were using surrogates and egg donors. And so a lot of times these families were coming over from different countries. And so they'd come into, you know, the Oregon, Portland, Oregon area where I live, and they didn't have any family. They didn't have any friends. They, a lot of times it was same sex male couples and they didn't even have a clue what to do with their babies. So they would trust me to come into their Airbnbs and spend the night and teach them everything they needed to know about having a newborn baby in like one overnight session. So it was, it was a lot of stress. It was pretty crazy, but very rewarding. Amazing. Is there anything you learned from dealing with those kind of stressful situations now that you can apply to being an entrepreneur? <laughs> I mean, the marketing side of it, um, for sure. The patient's side of it, for sure. Um, I mean, reproductive medicine in itself, that provided me the stability of having, you know, a stable paycheck. I had a 401k. I had paid time off. I had all of that stability with working in reproductive medicine. And then adding in being a postpartum doula, that was just all extra. And for me, that was just, you know, fun. I loved babies. I loved families. I loved helping people. And I grew that business from nothing. So I had to market myself. I had to tell people about it. I created my own website and I did 
I have no marketing background. Like I, I literally just had to kind of learn as I went and figure it all out. And I, I feel like I did a pretty good job and it's helping me with my business now. I love that. Yeah. No, translating that experience. Cause I know we have a lot of people in the audience and in the community that, you know, have, have done other things, right? So exactly like you, I had a career, I had maybe had a few careers before and now I'm doing something totally, totally different. So let me ask you this. So when it comes to that, that topic of consistency, I know one of the things that you mentioned was that consistency, that approach that you took was one of the things that helped you build your business to be as successful as, as it is now. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. Um, so I feel like with my other business with being a postpartum doula, I had to set myself apart. Like we have so many doulas in the Pacific Northwest, Portland specific, like there's doulas everywhere. So I had to do things different. Um, I took that business as more of like an education um, approach where I would teach people. I wouldn't just like go in and do, you know, people's laundry or, or let the moms sleep. Like I went in and taught them how to, you know, take care of their babies, um, you know, and how to optimize their workspace and their home space to have a newborn baby. And I had to, you know, do things different. And I had to kind of do that with money as well. There is, you know, a lot of people out there, especially in the Portland area that sell money. And so I had to figure out how to do it differently. So like I had to do customer service differently. I had to offer borrow baskets. I had to show up consistently. I had to build trust with people. And I think that's what's huge with money. It, um, it's not a grab and go product like some of the other businesses out there. Like, you know, if you have an event coming up and you just want some color street nails, you're going to go and find some nails and you're going to buy those nails. You know exactly what you want. You might have to pick your color or if maybe you need some um, new supplies for your kitchen, like you kind of have an idea of what you want. You can go and shop for it and it's pretty quick. There's not a lot of trust that needs to happen with that. But with money, it, um, I, it's different. You know, people, I'm asking them to shampoo twice. Most people don't shampoo twice. They're, even though their bottle says lather, rinse, repeat, they don't do that. Um, you know, I'm asking them to emulsify. I'm asking them to do things different. And so I had to, you know, show up. I had to show people that I was the authority and what it is that I do, that I was, you know, educational on hair care and skin care just in general. So being able to be consistent in social media, especially, and give value to people and not just say, Hey, buy my product because I love it and it's awesome and I can change your hair. I had to show people, like, hey, you don't even have to buy money, but let me tell you how to optimize your washing experience with whatever it is that you have in the shower. Let me tell you how to use maybe your dry shampoo that you get at the Dollar Tree and still get the best experience out of it, even if you're not buying my, my money. So I've had to really stay consistent with building trust with people. And mostly with that is just showing up consistently and authentically and not being afraid to share with people when I'm having a bad day or I'm stressed, you know, I, I did my hair for you today because we're doing this podcast, but if any of you guys end up following me on social media, I don't ever wear makeup. My hair is often in a messy bun. I work 90% of the time at home in my pajamas. And I do that because I want people to know that you don't have to be dressed to the nines to be successful in a business. You don't have to do your hair every day to be successful in a business. You just have to be authentic. You have to be yourself and you have to show up every day and just be yourself. And that's it. I love that. So a couple of things, like you said, just totally stand out to me, right? The idea that you have to be real, you have to, to show up as you, as yourself really. And you found this voice, you found this very differentiated position, because like you said, there are a lot of people who sell Monate, there are a lot of people who sell comparable products or substitute products or, you know, so it's, it's a competitive space. So how do you stand apart from others? So in finding that brand voice, I love the fact that you focus on the fact that, you know, I'm not going to rush to the sale of buy this one thing right? I can offer advice. I can offer education and who knows where that relationship could lead. Right. So I love the fact that you, you know, you mentioned when you're being in the doula business as well, you know, everyone else may have come in and said, okay, I'm just going to take the baby. You go ahead and sleep. But then once they leave that mom, that dad doesn't have any additional skill, right? They don't have anything that that's been left behind that adds 
value to their life or their experience when you're not physically there. So I love that you focused on that and kind of brought that now into this business and, you know, are offering education, offering kind of that extra support. That's definitely one of the things that's been standing out to me as a customer. So what did you do or were there any hurdles or kind of questions that you asked yourself when you were finding that brand voice? Because I know there are a few people in the community that are at that point where they're kind of launching a business and they're trying to figure out, okay, what is my differentiator? What is the thing that I'm going to do that's different? How did you land on that? How did you decide what that was going to be for you? I honestly, I have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I just knew that to stand apart from everybody else, I had to do things different. And I feel like I've always been that way, no matter what project I take underneath, um, you know, myself, I am a runner. I've always been a runner, whatever that looks like. Like when I put my mind to something, I go all in. Like if I'm going to go to school, I'm going to work full time. I'm going to go to school. I'm, you know, it's just like <laughs> I go in a hundred percent and I always try to set myself apart. Um, I don't, I don't know how I stumbled upon that. I just kind of look at what other people are doing and just kind of think like, how do I do that better? <laughs> No, I love that. Uh, and asking questions, right? So how can I do yeah. that better? How can I stand apart? I love that. So being being curious. So the other thing you mentioned that, you know, kind of led to was one of the keys to your success was mindset. So uh, talk to us a bit about that. What What lessons have you learned when it comes to that mindset change or what mindset you really do have to embrace in order to, to move forward? Yes, absolutely. I mean, like I said, I got into this business with zero intentions of it being a business. I was already busy. I didn't have time to add a fifth job onto my plate. Um, so when the, when things just kind of happened and I found myself in this place where I got laid off due to the pandemic, it was an odd time where you couldn't just go out and find another job like you could have if you got laid off like a year prior Um, And I just sat here with just, you know, time on my hands and I could have, you know, thought like, oh my gosh, I just lost this job that I've been at for seven years and it's the end of my world. Like I allowed myself to have a pity party for like one day. And then I just decided to just switch my mindset and, and change everything and just trust the fact that like, okay, I could sit here and dwell in the fact that I just lost my dream job that I thought I would retire at. I have no income (laughs) coming in right now. Um, I have a mortgage. I have kids to feed. You know, I've got this property that I have and I just decided to go all in and trust the fact that like, you know, if it doesn't work out, I can pivot in the future. But I, I jumped all in. I gave it all that I had. And honestly, the consistency and the mindset kind of went hand in hand because I made zero money in my first year with my business. And a lot of people, that's when they get frustrated. You know, they, they get excited with a new job and um, or a new business and they maybe give it everything that they've got for three months and then customers don't come in the orders don't come in they're not getting likes on social media people aren't commenting on their posts and I'm like you guys um this is what I tell my team and I also you know host vendor events and I'm like you guys you can't base your success on the amount of orders or how many likes or comments if I based my success on that first year on how many likes I got or how many orders I got like I would not be where I'm at right now and and you guys I'm top one percent of my company. Um, I do this full time now. I make a very decent income with what it is that I do because I was consistent and mindset for me was a choice. I could have, you know, dwelled in the fact that I lost everything and had to start over from scratch, or I could choose to, you know, get up every day and give it a hundred percent and see what happens. And I went from making, $6,000 $6,000 my very first year with Monet, which is not, I mean, that's pretty awesome for some people, but when you're trying to make this a, a full-time business, that does not even pay your mortgage for a couple of months. Um, to I went to 30,000 my second year and this last year I'm at over 60,000. So consistency mindset, has it been easy? No. (laughs) Has it been tough? Absolutely. Do I have days where I don't want to do anything and I don't want to get up and I don't want to post on social media? Absolutely. But you know, you have to, 
you have to treat it like a business, number one, and that's what I do. And I feel like a lot of people don't do that. They're not consistent. Um, their mindset is they treat their business like a hobby and it gets paid like a hobby. Treat it like a job, you're going to get paid like a job. But that starts first with your mindset. I think that's an amazing point and very powerful that, like you said, if, if you're going to treat it like a hobby, it's going to turn into that. So do you have habits or, or rituals or kind of daily practices that help you kind of stay in the zone or stay in that kind of mindset? I mean, I just gave myself a, um, not a raise, like a promotion. <laughs> I moved my office into my son, my oldest son moved out two years ago and we had his room as a spare bedroom prior to using this as my office. I worked in my bedroom. So it was a little bit harder separating the you know, work home life when you work in your bedroom. I did have like a, a separate space, which helped me. Um, I don't think I could be successful just like sitting on my couch in front of my fire with the TV on. I don't think I could really give it the time that it that it needed if I didn't have that right setup. Um, so for me personally, like having the right setup, I have a huge dry erase board where I can write, you know, my goals and what I need to do. I keep a planner, I keep a desktop and for me, that's what helps me stay focused and consistent is like I get up, I help my kiddo get off to school, I do the house chores, and then I'm right up to work. Like, just like you would anything else. And I tell this to my team too, like, okay, if you had a job that you had to go to and maybe you woke up and you were tired, maybe your kid didn't, you know, was sick the night before you didn't get a lot of sleep. Like you'd still get up, you'd still get dressed, you'd still get in your car, you'd still show up to work, you'd still clock in, you'd still do your job. Why is that any different than if you work from home? Like you still have to do the do, right? Like you couldn't just buy a boutique and then, you know, not turn the lights on, not open up the door, not advertise, like you, you still have to treat it like a job. So, I mean, that's what I do. I treat it like a job. I have a workspace. I set office hours. I get to be flexible with my office hours. I can vacation when I want and work from my phone. Um, I can, you know, go to coffee dates whenever I please. And that's the, the bonus of having, you know, working for yourself. But for the most part, I do set office hours and um, have an office space. And I, I feel like that's what really helps me. No, I think those are all great adv advice for anyone that's listening who's maybe feeling a little bit stuck or a little bit like, gosh, it's hard to focus. <laughs> so creating space and intention. I love that. I mean, one of the things as a customer that I've loved is the follow-up too. So it's obvious that, you know, you have these kind of routines where you're following up with your customers, you're following up with your audience. Uh, I even love, you know, asking questions about how's it working and, you know, celebrating the wins. So um, as you're doing that, what, what are some of your favorite things that you're hearing from, from your other customers or your other clients about, you know, the changes that you are making in their life? I mean, one thing that I hear consistently, and I love hearing that you say this as well, is I have so many of my customers tell me your follow-up is like phenomenal. <laughs> and I guess I do. I really pride myself in my follow-up because I just know how I like to be treated as a customer. And I forget, like I think about shampoo every day, all day, right? Like I wake up and I think about shampoo and I think about my customers. I think about my business, but for me personally, as a consumer myself, like I don't think about, like, I love color street, but I don't think about it. So like when I'm due for, you know, some nails or if I'm due for some essential oils, sometimes I'm like, oh wait, who did I order that from? Like, I really liked that one girl and she had a really good deal and she like dropped it off at my house. And I really liked how she set herself apart, but I forget. But if I've got somebody who, you know, checks in with me every couple of months and says, Hey, are you due for some color street? Or are you, how are you doing on, on your essential oils? And I'm like, Oh, that's right. Lauren does color street. Yes. I'm actually due for an order. So I just know what it is that I like myself when it comes to customer service service. And so that's what I do for my customers. And I love the fact that I do hear from my customers continuously that they appreciate that I do that for them. Cause that's what I want. That's what I want for myself. No. And I think that's a really good point is that there have been times where I've definitely wanted to remember who that person was or, Oh, I met them at a networking event, or I even would love to, to buy from them. I'd love to be a client, a customer. But you just can't remember. <laughs> we're, we're in inundated with so many messages and so many names these days. It is hard. So, 
you know, I know it's it's a bit cliche, but the fortune is in the follow up. How to how to kind of stay top of mind and and relevant. So, is there any kind of um, advice you have? So, for people who maybe are worried about following up, that you might have for them in terms of how to approach it or how to even just get started with being more consistent in reaching back out to people. Yes, absolutely. You. So, I'm going to speak all to all of you guys. You are overthinking it because you think more about your product than they do. So like for me, if I was reaching out to Mary um, and maybe like, maybe I sent somebody a cart or maybe I sent somebody a sample and I'm like wanting to know whether or not they tried it. Again, I think about my shampoo business every day, all day. These other people, you know, they're busy. They've got kids, they've got a job they're going to, you know, they've got life that's happening. They're stressed out with the economy or whatever. Like there's other things that are going on. So for me personally, um, I have kind of a routine of what I do. I pick a day of the week and that's when I do my follow-up. I don't know if you ever noticed that when we were working on um, samples stuff like that. But for me, it's like Monday's my follow-up day. I'm a good old fashioned pen and paper girl. Like I write down my potentials and anybody that I send a sample to on a notebook and that is it. And every Monday I go through my notebook and I reach out to however I'm communicating with that person, whether it's text or messenger. And I just say like, Hey Mary, how's it going? Have you had a chance to, to try those samples? And if, if they say no, then I just say, that's okay. Let me, I'm going to check in with you next Monday. Always give them the next date that you're going to check in with them so they know to expect it. Okay, so then I check in the next Monday. Hey, Mary, have you had a chance to try those samples yet? Oh, you know what? Things got busy. They're still in my purse. That's okay. I'm going to check in with you next Monday. And then I'm not having to remember. I have it written down. I do it every Monday. Now you get ghosted, right? So pretty soon Mary's going to stop responding to me because she keeps forgetting to use those samples. That is okay. If I get ghosted three Mondays in a row, then what I do is I start a different conversation. Hey, Mary, I see that you just went on vacation. Where did you go? What did you do? Oh my gosh, it looks like you had so much fun. You know, as you start another conversation, bring them back into the conversation. That's again with building the trust, the consistency, the mindset about it. A lot of people just get so frustrated. They're easy to give up. And at the end of the day, I think if you give people the benefit of the doubt, I don't think people mean to ghost us. I don't, I mean, if they asked for a sample, they wanted to use it. They were interested in it. Maybe it's not in their budget and they're worried about hurting your feelings. That's okay. <laughs> like I, I also don't tie any emotion to the outcome. And I think that's huge. Like I just want to genuinely you know, give people value and give them tips and tricks on things that they can use with their own products. And I feel like that pays me back tenfold because then I take the emotion out of it. If somebody doesn't want to respond to me, I ask them about something else. I bring that conversation back up. I'm continuing to build that trust with them. I'm commenting on their social media. They're not just a sale to me. I really care about them as a person and what's going on in their life. And I show that with how I treat them. And so I feel like that's super important too. Don't look at everybody as just a sale or a number. They're a person. They have a life. They're busy. Show that you care about them more than just you care about their sale or their money. I love that. They're not a customer. They're actually like a human. Right? So we actually are creating real human relationships here. I mean, Absolutely. it's funny because I work with, I work with, you know, entrepreneurs, small business owners, and then I also still work with big brands, big businesses. And it's so funny because so many of the large, you know, global brands that I work with are trying to figure out how to wrap personalization back into their conversations with their customers. And so often I feel like the opposite happens when we're a small business owner, when we're an entrepreneur, we're trying to scale and automate and how do I mass produce my messaging? But I think the genius in what you're doing and what you just shared with us is that no, this isn't just a name on a list. This isn't like an email blast I'm sending out. I'm, I'm thinking about this as a human. If they don't buy this product, I'm going to release why it's not personal. And I'm also going to absolve them of any guilt, right? Any of that, you know, I don't want to insult them or I don't want to, you know, it's not right fit. So I don't want to hurt their feelings. And because you never know where that relationship could go, right? It could be a referral. It could be a connection. It could be a collaborator, there's opportunity there that we may not even 
know to even ask for yet. Right. Absolutely. 100%. I love that. No, brilliant. Amazing. So tell us a little bit about how we can find out more about you. What is the best place to go to, to learn more about you and Monet? So two things, um, my Instagram, I would love to get new friends on Instagram, follow me and I'll follow you back. Um, it's just Nikki Ryan Peters and, um, my Facebook group, I do it a collaborative, um, Facebook group with my team and we're huge on value. Um, like I've already spoke on before. And I think most of our love language is gift giving <laughs> and we do a lot of giveaways in there. And sometimes they're specific to being a customer of ours, but our last one we did like over. 14 different products. All you had to do was comment on our post. You did not have to be a customer. There was no purchase necessary. We just, we genuinely love our product and we want to get it into as many hands as possible. And we, and the best way to do that is to give it away for free. So joining my Facebook group, um, it's next level experience. Um, if we can drop any links in here, that would be great. But yeah, Instagram and my Facebook group are the two main ones. Fantastic. And we'll definitely put all the links uh, where you can find Nikki in the show notes for today. And I would definitely say, you know, I have been, like I said, blown away by your service, uh, by your care for your customers. So I just want to thank you personally uh, for the concern that you take with, with the people that you're building these relationships with and not treating us just like a number. So. Thank you. So <laughs> Absolutely. Any parting thoughts for uh, our audience here today, anyone that's listening or watching? You know, I will say I love me a good system. And so I guess the last thing I want to share with you guys, because I've been through them all. I am a type A personality. I'm very organized. I love me a good system. And I have tried just about everyone that's out there. And if I had to give any um, any business advice on something that's worth your time and money. I love project broadcasts. I'm just going to give a little plug to that. I don't make any money off of them. I'm not an affiliate with them. I just really, really like them. Um, it is, uh, it's an app and it's also a desktop version. It's how I communicate with my customers. It's how I talk to you, but it does allow you to have those personal conversations through text message, but have the boundaries of having a business phone without having to actually have a business phone, but you can set up systems with it. So I feel like that's, that's the one thing I try to share with all of my business owner friends as project broadcast. It does cost, I believe $15 a month, but it's worth it. Um, trust me. There's so many systems that you can set up with it. I love that. And I'm totally going to put that in our Facebook group too, because we always do a little, uh, monthly, what's your favorite tech, uh, thread. So I want to make sure to put that in there. So definitely that's a great, great piece of advice. Cause sometimes it's a system. Sometimes it's a tool that makes all the difference to make our, our lives a little easier and more enjoyable. So thank you for yeah. sharing that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Nikki. I really appreciate you joining us for today's expert feature episode. And for all of you watching or listening, uh, stay tuned. We're going to have more coming for you in the series. And if you have any questions for Nikki, for me, out of anything we talked about today, definitely engage in the community. Again, we'll drop all of the links to find Nikki and reach out to her, find out more about what she's up to in the show notes. Thanks so much. I'm Mary Zarnecki, and I will see you on the next episode of Sticky Note Marketing. Cheers.